Hi. <laughs> See, I can't do it. Okay, one, two, three. Hi, British Vogue. I'm Kate Moss, and this is my life in looks. So, this was Dolce Gabbana. Probably my first show in Milan. I think I just met Naomi and Christie. That was the beginning of years of fashion fun. It was definitely easier having a group of friends because it can be quite lonely when you start out if you don't know people and you're staying in these hotels that are not very nice. And they don't feed you at shows either. <laughs> Glass of champagne, that was it back in the day. Oh, this is my first shoot for Calvin Klein with Patrick de Marchelier and Fabien Baron. Fabien said you should go meet Calvin. So I went to the office and um, he booked me for this campaign, CK Jeans. He wanted to put me under contract and that was a big thing, to be a model and have a contract. So funny because Paul Cabaco said, um, Kate, just take it. You're so short, you're never going to work that much anyway. I think this was a time when I was doing so many shows in a day that you wouldn't even notice what clothes you were wearing. Sometimes six shows a day. Like now, you could only do one or two, maybe, a push. Then I would run in 20 minutes before the show starts with hair and makeup from the other show, and they would just throw it all on. So there was a lot of adrenaline. It was so much fun. Uh, the Chanel shows were so chaotic. There was hundreds and hundreds of people backstage and the fittings would always go on all night. And Carl was so lovely and generous. Once my mum came with me to a fitting and he said, take them downstairs. And my mum got a Chanel suit and a bag and it's like one of those things you never forget, really. This is John's show in Paris. I still have that jacket. And I cried after this show because a lot of the girls got more than one look. And I only had one look. And I thought, he doesn't like me. And I was crying. And that's when I met Mario Testino. And he came up to me on the stairs and was like, why are you crying? And I was like, he, did, he only gave me one outfit. And he said, you are like perfume. You only need one drop. <gasps> this was one of my favorite. Oh, Jean-Paul Gaultier is in the picture. This is a Vivian Westwood show. And it was a Magnum ice cream. And they just said, eat that while you go out with no top on. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'll try. I managed that in those heels as well, that skirt. I've got one, and Lila, she's like, Molly, it's so short. <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to see your knickers. <laughs> that collection was so beautiful. I was very lucky, actually. I feel very, really lucky to be like, have had that experience. Oh, when I had my first Vogue cover, I thought, right, I've made it, that's it. I don't have to do it anymore. I think I was 19. It was really special. For me to be on Vogue, I was like, wow, I can not believe it. I've got it um, framed at home. It's um, one of my favourite pictures, I think. Oh God, this is a funny night. <laughs> so basically, I was at Corinne's flat in Brewery Street and we were going to some party and um, that night Radiohead were playing in Camden in a little pub. Oh, and we could hear Radiohead playing Creep. Please let us in, please let us in. And he was like, go on then. And we ran in and they were like, I'm a Creep. And the lights were like that purple light flashing. I did not know that this dress was see-through until the pictures came out the next day in the newspaper. It was the flash that made it look naked because actually the fabric, when I was wearing it, when I went out, I didn't think it was that see-through, but obviously it was, I mean, had I known, I'd be talking about it 30 years later. Good dress, good night. Oh my God. Sam McKnight, Vivian, me, wagon. We've been to the Natural History Museum. This was on our way out. And I was obsessed with Vivian. My first big paycheck 
was on a Vivian Westwood coat that was like this sheepskin and it was pale blue to the floor. Oh, it's so beautiful. I still have it. And Naomi was wearing those. I mean, how she walked in those, I don't know. The, the sheepskin one that I had took up so much room in the car that I had to sit on the floor of the car. The coat had the seat. <laughs> oh. This was when I just met Johnny and I bought those boots in a secondhand shop. They were blue snakeskin and those jeans and that bag I still have and that's from a secondhand shop. And that is a Rick t-shirt. And that was going to LA from New York to go to see Johnny. That was like, I was on the go. Life was happening. This is Milan. In 1995, Gianni Versace was an incredible man. He was a beautiful person. He was generous and exciting and glamorous, so glamorous. Everything about Versace was like the flowers, the music, the light, the sparkles, the everything. It was incredible. This is the John Galliano dress that I have lost. If anyone has it out there, please return to me. It's my favourite dress. He gave it to me for my 21st birthday. And um, those Manolo Blahnik shoes were my favourite shoes. I lived in them. They were the Mary Jane black painting. And that diamond necklace Johnny gave me, they were the first diamonds I ever owned. He pulled them out the crack of his arm. We were going out for dinner and he said, I've got a, something on my bum. Can you have a look? And I was like, what? And I put my hand down in his trousers and I pulled out a diamond necklace. That diamond necklace. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh dear. They were bumpster trousers. I loved the bumpsters because I used to wear really, really low things anyway. So Lee went to New York and did a show and we were all backstage. There was a thunderstorm outside and I went to the door and I could see Anna Winter and Grace Coddington with umbrellas. And I ran back in, I was like, Lee, Anna and Grace are outside, you've got to let them in. And Andre, Lee on telly, you've got to let them in. He was like, fuck sake, and screaming, everything was, oh, it was, Chaos. It was amazing. Amazing chaos. Oh, yeah. This dress. Oh, I don't know where that's gone either. Apparently, this dress is a 1920s designer that apparently is like museum piece. I mean, I had no idea. And then I copied it for Topshop. <sighs> then everyone can have it. I love vintage shopping. It's my favourite thing. I kind of go in and I, I can feel it. Like there's treasures in there. And then I just go through every, everything and just put in the dressing room, then try everything on. But it's my favorite thing. That and roller coasters. This I found in a vintage shop down the street from my house. I didn't have anything to wear for my 30th birthday. And I was like, oh my God, and I just flown in the night before. And I was like, what am I gonna wear? So we walk down to Church Street and there's a little shop on the corner. You go downstairs and they had some antique things, dresses and... We found this and it had a cape and it was blue sequins. It was like definitely somebody universe sent that dress to me because it was just the most amazing dress. I came up with the theme because I wanted it in 1920s and I thought Beautiful and the Damned. Um, I love F. Scott Fitzgerald and I thought it was a really good title for a party. Jay Joplin and... Um, Joe Corey very generously lent me their houses and they lived next door to each other and we went in one house into Jay's house which was all formal and roses and white and beautiful and then you'd go out the back way and Joe's house was like a club and dark and dingy and it was amazing. Beautiful and that. Oh Glastonbury. It was really muddy that year and you had to have a welly on. Doesn't really matter what goes on top. I think footwear is key. Because as long as you can get around from A to B, that's what you need to do in festivals. And those are Alexander McQueen shorts. 
and I was going out with Pete Doherty at the time, so I was wearing like glow-in-the-dark beads that he'd given me. That bag survived like five Glastonbury's. You can get so much in it, it was like a TARDIS, it was amazing. Okay, so Lee asked me to do something special for his show. They put me in the dress, put me in a, on a harness, and then I span around, like, wafting. He said it was like, he wanted me to be like a wisp, like a phoenix rising and then going into a fairy and wisping away. He said, you could come to the show and see it, but it'd be better if you didn't. And I said, yeah, I think you're right. So I went to Thailand with my mum and I woke up at four in the morning and I phoned my friend who was at the show and the show had just finished and I could hear all the clapping and people and screaming and she was like, it's amazing, it's amazing. And then since then, I've seen it in the v &A. I cried because obviously I saw it after he died. It was amazing, he was a genius. <gasps> so this was hilarious. I've worked with Comic Relief a lot. I'm always up for it. And um, they asked me to be Katie Pollard, Vicky Pollard's little sister. And I thought, amazing, that is hilarious. But I didn't know it was live at a theatre. I thought it was going to be on TV and we could cut and it was a script and all that. And I don't like talking. I get really nervous. <laughs> I love talking to my friends, but I mean, if I had to accept her in a war, I'd be like, thank you and run away. My whole body was shaking. And then they, the curtains opened, we really went out. And it just went by in a flash, but I didn't fluff it. I was so happy. For me, a huge success. My one night, one night only, on stage. Ah, oh, playboy. I mean, you kind of had to do it. Well, I did anyway. Well, I met. Hugh Hefner. I went to his house and he, he was there with his kids and a few of his bunnies. And one of his bunnies took me around the house and like, gave me a tour and stuff. And I met his secretary who'd been with him for like 70 years. And they're just like a really lovely institution or something, family vibe. So I don't know, I really liked it. I, it's not, there was nothing like seedy or gross about it. It was kind of really, playful and that outfit I have that they gave it to me it's gorgeous like it was one woman that made all the bunny girls outfits in the 60s they knew what they were doing then. they were made to last it wasn't like a flimsy thing it was like it's got to go through a party every night <laughs> Kim's last Louis Vuitton show Naomi and I did the finale in a trench. I love that trench. We were all screaming. It was one of those fashion moments, for sure. I met Kim at my friend's wedding, and we were just hanging out, and he started voguing. I was like, oh my God, you know how to vogue. And I was like, I love you. And he was like, I love you. And then that was it. <laughs> and we just became friends. Yay, Edward, is that Vogue? Edward, is that Vogue? Oh, I love this cover. Edward always turns me up. He always calls me Kitty Cat, so I always give him Kitty Cat. That's what I was giving there, give bit Kitty Cat. Lila's first met. She looks amazing. She's so beautiful. I loved my dress. It was like wearing a really luxurious dressing gown, because it was silk velvet. Really light, really well made, like a zipper in here. I just felt really comfortable. Lila didn't feel as comfortable, I don't think. <laughs> she couldn't go to the toilet, but she looked amazing and she, she loved her look. She's got really good fashion sense. I ask her advice. She doesn't ask me, I ask her. <laughs> Thanks for watching, that was my life in looks. <laughs>